Welcome to Cardis, part of the town of Rasebori since 2009. This guided tour consists of three parts. Cardis past and present, Brubaka archaeological site and healing Ekelund in Cardis. This tour has been funded by Westnudenska Kultursamfundet as an EU project. Karis past and present. Karis, or Karia in Finnish, boasts a long impressive history. The first settlers came to the region during the Stone Age, approximately 10,000 years ago. During the Iron Age, around 2,500-1,000 years ago, Karis was one of the most heavily populated regions in Finland. Remnants of this time can be found at the Brubaka archaeological site. Among the medieval relics found in Karis are the ruins of the mysterious Junkarsbori castle on the Svarto stream and Grabak castle just a few kilometers south of central Karis. The most significant monument is without doubt the ruins of Rasebori castle. In the Middle Ages, Karis was an extensive parish, which, due to the presence of Rasebori castle, became the seat of secular power in Osima. The King's Road, which passes through western Usima and Karis, has been a vital route ever since the Middle Ages. Ancient immigrants settled around the shores of Leptresket, which flowed into the sea down the Rasebori stream. They provided for themselves primarily by fishing and hunting. The waterway was equally important to the settlers living along its banks as it was to travellers. The name Karis or Karia appears in writing for the first time in 1326. This is presumably a reference to the place named Karia on Saaremaa island in Estonia, from which the Finnish settlers were supposed to have originated. Thus it is a borrowed name, bearing witness to the immigration. The oldest find to show Finnish immigration from Estonia was found at the Krugords Malmen burial site, which dates back to the Roman Iron Age in the 4-1st centuries AD. During the Vendel era in the 7th to 9th centuries, the region was subjected to strong influences from the west. This triggered the building of several fortifications south of Leptresket, namely Sutarkula, Brubak and Buklint. This is where the so-called Karis brooch was found, probably an offering from the 8th century. Numerous Iron Age finds have also been made at Enbakken in Chila and in Högvalla. The Swedish crown saw early on how important it would be to maintain control of the waterway along the Svarto stream to Tavastia. It required a defence infrastructure and the local population needed protection. Three defensive fortifications were built, of which Junkars Bori from the 13th century is oldest. Rasebori was founded in the 1370s, while Grabbakka, a private residential castle, was established in the 1480s. A couple of kilometers from the town center on the shore of Lake Churkshen lies Karis medieval St. Catherine's Church, which was consecrated in 1470. Legend has it that it was named after Catherine, the drowned wife of the Lord of Rasebori Castle, Lars Axelsson Tot. Numerous ironworks have operated in western Uusima for centuries. Finland's first ironworks was opened in 1520 when Duke John established a hammersmithy in Svarto. The local population grew along with the ironworking industry. The Svarto Timber Church was finished in 1761. Svarto Manor is one of Finland's most valuable manor estates. Karis has become known as a railway town and as a hub on the coastal railway line. The Hanko Hyvinka line opened in 1873 and the Turku Helsinki line followed in 1903. The beautiful wooden station house was built the same year and is still in use. In 1910, Karis became a municipal community with its own taxing, and in 1930 a township, with the rural areas surrounding it being incorporated as the rural municipality of Karis. In 1969, the rural municipality of Karis and Karis Township united, and in 1977, Karis finally became a town. In 2009, the town of Karis merged with the town of Ekenes and the municipality of Pohja to form a new town with an old name, Rasebori. Karis has the appearance of a garden town, with Pumpviken Park in the town centre and the beautiful Lake Leptresket, a birdwatcher's paradise nearby. The architect Hilding Ekelund 
designed almost all of the public buildings in Cardis over a three-decade period from the 1940s on. Brubaka Archaeological Site The Brubaka Archaeological Site is located on the shore of Lake Leptresket. Here we find traces of habitation from the Iron Age to the 20th century. The wealth of flora with numerous cultivated plants indicates human activity in the area over a long period of time. The Brubaka area consists of two hills. The south hill is surrounded by hazel thickets and firs, whilst the north hill is covered by meadows and pine forest. The meadows also extend across the hollow between the hills to the southernmost part of the area. The oldest artefacts found at Brubaka date from the early Roman Iron Age in the 3rd to 5th centuries and the migration period from the 5th to the 7th centuries. On the south hill there are two four-sided stone settings, graves from the migration period, in which spearheads, brooches, pearls, an arrowhead and a bronze spiral ring were found during excavations. The so-called Cardis brooch, dating back to the Merovingian period in the 7th to 9th centuries, was found here. Archaeologists believe that the buckle is a sacrificial offering and was placed in the grave at a later date. The brooch served as the model for Kalevalakoros Karia brooch. Near the four-sided graves are traces of historic era habitation, namely the foundation of a farmstead with outhouses and a partially stone-walled field stretching to the north. Farther out on the hillside to the east are the remnants of an oven from a drying barn and in the meadow between the Brubaka hills one can just make out ancient fields, ditches and stone heaps. The Brubaka site also has other types of stone settings and cairns. Of these, some are assumed to be graves from the Iron Age, whilst others probably have later origins suggesting farming or past houses. From the site of the four-sided graves, a fantastic view opens out to the west over fields and hills. Traces of ancient settlements can be found across the hills, including the medieval farm, Dumargord. The rich flora of Brobaka consists of meadow, rockery and woodland grove species. Typical cultivated plants to be found around the ancient settlements include tower rockcress, spiked sedge, downy oat grass, imperfect St. John's wort, ribwort and hairsfoot clover. Old garden plants such as lilac, snowberry, hop, apple, blackcurrant and rose grow wild on the ancient farm sites. Hazel bushes provide an excellent habitat for nutcrackers. Hildingekelund in Karis Architect Hildingekelund, also known as Karis' own architect, gave shape to almost all of Karis' public buildings for three decades. Without doubt, he is the one to have most strongly influenced the architectural heritage of the town. Hildingekelund was born in Kangas near Minier Mikkeli in 1893 and died in Helsinki in 1984. After completing his basic schooling, Ekelund studied architecture at Helsinki Technical College. It was here he met his wife-to-be, Eva Kulefeld Ekelund, a significant architect in her own right. The pair graduated together in 1916 and subsequently worked for different architectural firms in both Finland and Sweden. They married in Stockholm in 1920. The following two-year study trip to Italy came to have great influence upon their development as architects and upon later study trips. Together, the pair drew up the plans for Stifts Gordon Larkula in Caris, exhibiting clear influences from Italian monasteries, 1920s classicism and the Siegduna Foundation buildings in Sweden. Ekelund was one of the 20th century's most influential architects in Finland. Together with his contemporaries Alvar Aalto, Birjar Brunila, Erik Brygman and J.S. Siren, he was among the foremost architects in the country. Major works that he has drawn include the Helsinki Art Museum, Tele Church, the Velodrome, the Olympic Village, the Rowing Stadium, the Finnish Embassy in Moscow and Sundholmen Power Station in Helsinki, as well as a long list of first-rate private homes. In addition to this, he drew up numerous plans for projects in and around Karis, most of which were realized.
His production may have been even more renowned if he had not so often come second or third in architectural competitions. Even his Italian-inspired blueprint for the Finnish parliament buildings of 1924, Cento Colonne, came only in second place. It was J.S. Irene's proposal which was later realized. Particularly towards the end of the 1920s and the beginning of the 30s, when the transition towards functionalism took place, Eklund was one of the foremost architects of the avant-garde. He was an eager spokesman for this new rationalist style. He was a great proponent of anonymous architecture, architettura minore, the traditional practical style found in southern countries which, to his eyes, stood for a true, durable and eternal architectural form. In 1930, Caris became a township, and buildings in the rapidly growing town north of Chila Malmen had been planned in various stages from the beginning of the century. Plans were drawn up by the surveyor, Volmar Svetishin, and the professor of architecture, Carolus Lindberg. Lindberg's plans proved to be too grand, however, and this is where Ekelund came in. His first commission was the 1930s chemists, and the last his unrealized plans from 1975 for a proposed museum, Acropolis, to be situated below the water tower. The background to Ekelund's involvement in Karis stems from the contacts he forged with township director Rudolf Eriksson and other private persons with whom he enjoyed lifelong friendship. From 1942 to 73 he served as an expert for the municipal administrative court and stood behind many public, ecclesiastical and private buildings. He was city architect in Helsinki during the 40s and professor at the Technical College during the 50s. The layout of the town and buildings is largely the result of his efforts. The town plan, that is to say the garden town Karis, still bears clear marks of his influence. This may be seen in the way lots are divided and in the placement of buildings in relation to lot boundaries and streets. One can easily submit that Ekelund was one of the most important people behind the planning and development of Karis in the 20th century. Ekelund's architecture may be generally characterized by its intellectual clarity. It is clean and reserved with an almost classic imprint. The buildings are most often of brick, sometimes with lighter plastering. Typical elements of his architecture are, for example, the internal divisions of the windows, the shape of the eaves and other details of the façade, such as small rounded windows and small balconies. The plans for what was then named Cardis Town Hall were drawn up in 1942-43 and the first stage of the project, what we see today, was approved. The middle part of the realized building was originally to be linked to a three-story tower on the east side and an accommodation wing on the west. Other buildings in Karis drawn by Ekelund include St. Olaf's Chapel, the assembly rooms, the water tower and the sports arena. He also drew several houses on private commission, such as a home for the elderly, the doctor's house, the nursery school, the children's farm and numerous schools including that in Chila, Samskulan and Western Netherlands Vocational School. Further information about his buildings may be found on information boards at the various sites and the further publication is also available.